The U.S. sitting pretty in Group F. That plus 13 goal differential could be the difference in case they tie Sweden in their group phase finale. It is day eight of the Women's World Cup in France. Joining me here in studio, Kate Markgraf. Fortunately for us, we also have Julie Foudy standing by live. Why don't we start uh, with her? Julie, you've been around this U.S. team. So much controversy surrounding this group here in the United States. What's the buzz? What's the vibe around the team there in France? You know, they'll say that they haven't been checking much social media. Um, and, and I honestly, I, I believe it. I think they also know, know, though, there has been a lot of noise back home about it. Um, but when I asked them today, I spoke to Carly Lloyd and Mallory Pugh, and I said, you know, what impact, if any, will all the hand-wringing at home have on your mindset going into this chili game? Meaning, are you going to take your foot off the gas pedal? And, and they were basically like, no, we go in and we score goals and we go for the win. And um, we respect them by playing as hard as we always do. So, and Kate, you, you, you know this <laughs> well as, as well. I mean, this is a team that doesn't have it in its DNA to – to, you know, to take their foot off the gas. So it's just how it's going to be. And I think that's funny because it's not so much about scoring goals. Mm -hmm. It's more about how they're going to celebrate. So that'll be something to watch against Chile. But mm -hmm. Fadi, my question to you is, what do you think, if anything, and the changes the U.S. will make heading into this lineup with such a deep roster? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, we talked about it a little bit after that game with Becky Sauerbrunn not getting a look um, because they said she was like 90, 95 percent with a, a little knock. Um, I think she'll uh, get a look back in that lineup. Maybe that means they push Ertz back into midfield, which means then they have to take out probably uh, Mewis or Haran. I mean, we've argued about that one as well. But I also think it's a great opportunity for them to get some of that front line some confidence as well. Uh, I, I know you don't want to disrupt it too much, but, I mean, when you look at the depth of uh, Carly Lloyd, Kristen Press, and Mallory Pugh coming off that bench, I, I think it's a chance to get some of them some minutes. But you also, it's always that balance of you got to go in with confidence to the game that really matters, which is Sweden in this group. Um, and you don't, of course, want to take Chile too lightly because we saw against Sweden that they're a much more organized group than Thailand. Kate, Who do you think they're going to change? Yeah, around? put yeah, yourself I, in Jill Ellis' shoes. What, right. what would you like to do with this lineup? Who would you like to see come off that bench? Well, this is the oldest roster in the World Cup. Mm -hmm. So this is a team that you're going to have to manage minutes as well as confidence. So I think it is that fine balance. I look at Rose Lavelle and I don't see a super healthy player. Like mm. I see a player that you have to manage because when she goes down, whether she knows it or not, she takes a really long time to come back up. So your first impression is she's still figuring out is she hurt or she's injured because she's often been injured from similar contacts. So that's a player I would give a rest. And I can imagine anyone that's at in that 30 and the wrong side of 30 is probably going to be sitting on the mm. bench tomorrow. And anyone that's on the bench, I can imagine like a Krieger coming in because Kelly O'Hara isn't 100% fit. And I can after and she played 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine her coming in. I expect to see a couple changes. It's all about energy and uh, injury prevention and managing confidence in minutes. For more, sign up now for ESPN+.